Hello, thank you for watching my video. In the New Testament, in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able to. So Paul here is saying there's things that are meat and things that are milk. Things that are milk. And he's obviously talking about intellectual things, teachings, ideas. <clears throat> now, of course, this is a metaphor. Um, <clears throat> it's a metaphor based on reality. In reality, a newborn baby needs milk. And you will cause problems maybe even death, if you do not give that baby milk, but you give it some solid food. When he says meat here, <clears throat> when the King James Version was translated into English, meat just meant anything that you eat. And now we use meat to mean the part of the animal we eat. But back then it was anything that you eat. <clears throat> so he could be thinking about or talking about Meat, like we use the word now, the flesh of the animal that's eaten, could be talking about bread, fruit. Either way, those things will not be helpful for a newborn baby. That baby needs milk. And so you'll cause yourself problems um, spiritually if you are not working on the milk, not getting your milk down. Uh, you don't need to go... Well, in real life, the baby grows and develops, and after so many months, they could start to have things that aren't milk. <clears throat> the time scale between reality and this parable, this metaphor, might not be exact. Um, but <clears throat> So why am I bringing this up, you might be wondering, or what got me thinking about it. <clears throat> I made a video to refute lies, false accusations made against the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and... There was some meat in those videos. It was meaty. Um, why was I bringing up meat into the videos? It's not bad to have uh, metaphorical meat in your videos. But be aware that that concept exists, so you might be seeing some meat. But antagonist of my church, one reason I needed to bring up meat in my videos is antagonists of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints were more eager to tell you what's wrong with us than what's right with them. Um, they bring up meaty things. So, if you heard something, have heard something about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that blew your mind, that was bizarre, that was weird, that seemed crazy to you, that makes you not want anything to do with us, you might have heard lies. Let's just put that possibility out there. There are a lot of people that are willing to lie about us. Um, but maybe you heard something that wasn't a lie, and you heard the meat. And you need to not choke yourself metaphorically, spiritually, choke yourself metaphorically, spiritually, to metaphor, metaphorical spiritual death. <sighs> See, Jesus Christ is the only way to receive salvation. And the only way to get to Jesus Christ is to come to his church that he founded in 1830. So you will cause yourself spiritual death if you let these meaty things keep you from uh, becoming a member of the church. So... That's why we talk. That's why I talk about this right now, and so now I've just told you to uh, make sure. Maybe you can still hear the meaty things, and it's not going to cause you problems. But look for this, the metaphorical milk. Don't only spend your time if you have not joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Don't only spend your time on meaty things. You need to get the milk down. What is the milk? You might say. Here's my ideas about what the milk is. It's the first principles and ordinances of the gospel. Worry more about whether you need to be baptized. 
the right baptism, the right way, the right place, the right people to do the baptism. Worry more about that than our temple ordinances for now. Um, and when you get to the temple, there will be no reversals of teachings, no hidden secret knowledge that when you get to the temple, oh, the devil is good? Or, you know, it's, there's nothing bad, and there's nothing that's a change um, or contradictory that you learn in the temple, like that hypothetical thing I just said, which is the opposite of what we believe in. The opposite of what you hear in the temple. You never hear the devil's good at any point in any church teaching. Um, now, so, get those basics down. The first principles and ordinances. Um, and, how do we learn about these things? Who is God's true and living prophet? Who was God's true prophet in 1830? That is important stuff. That's the milk. Once you get that milk down, and you understand and have faith that Jesus Christ really did call Joseph Smith, then you are setting yourself up where you can be ready to believe those things that before seemed a little bizarre to you. When you understand that Father in Heaven really is our Father in Heaven, and Mother in Heaven too, our Heavenly Parent, then other ideas and concepts will fit in with your understanding, will metaphorically go down better. All right, another way to figure out what is the milk of the gospel is the things that the missionaries teach you. I mean, the, the things in the lessons. It's possible you will have the missionaries over and ask them a question that brings up a subject that's not in the lessons. And it's okay if there's something that you're wondering about, ask. Um, I, I was a missionary, um, so I, I think I can tell you the mindset of most missionaries. But most missionaries, maybe all, and uh, don't mind the questions. And we shouldn't mind questions. If there's something you're wondering about, we should answer it. Um, one reason that a missionary should answer questions from the person that's asking them is the thing that the person is wondering about might be very distracting. It might just be consuming their mind so that they have a hard time listening to you talk about anything else until you answer that one question that is, you know, uh, that they're thinking about. <clears throat> All right. Um, another way to measure what is the milk of the gospel, get a hold of the Book of Mormon. If you have this device you're watching me on, you can read the Book of Mormon because it's there on the internet at comeunterchrist.org or churchofjesuschrist.org. Um, not the Church of Jesus Christ, because you end up with something else if you get that. <laughs> and if there's like one certain letter in the middle, you get something else. And it's not .com, it's .org. But you can read the Book of Mormon there. The Book of Mormon is metaphorical milk. It gets that important basic information to you. That information that gets you ready to metaphorically eat more information. That's meaty. Um, that information that we could compare to a foundation, a different metaphor of foundation to build on everything else. Thank you for watching. You have a good day. And I encourage you to go to our websites to learn more about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I am, of course, not an official spokesman making this video at church headquarters in Salt Lake. I am an active, believing member uh, who is anxiously engaged in the good cause. And a good cause is spreading the gospel. Have a good day.